Hey Lashkey Kids, and a special shout out to the Drive-In Mutants. I really appreciate the positive feedback you guys have given me, the positive comments, and you sharing my videos on Twitter. That has really made me feel so much better about doing this, so thank you so much. So let's get right to it. This is going to be the spoiler-free review for Child's Play 2019. I was actually a little bit interested in seeing this because of the AI angle and I wanted to see how they were going to handle that because that's kind of an interesting subject for me. I had said in one of my previous videos that the way that Andy was acting in a trailer made him seem like he was acting too young and fortunately I've been pleasantly surprised in that that was not the case for the movie and some of the scenes that were in the trailer were not in the movie or they might have been reshot because in the trailer I remember him having a kind of slurred drooly type of speech but when I saw the film he was speaking completely clearly so I'm guessing that those scenes were reshot. The young actor's name who played Andy is Gabriel Bateman and I thought that he did a pretty good job with what he was given. I wish that they had given him more character development than what there was because it just the feel of the movie seemed to lend itself to having a little bit more character development in order for us to get to know the kids and and get to care about anyone. Brian Tyree Henry and Aubrey Plaza were just kind of there. Granted in the original the detective and the mother didn't have a whole lot of backstory to begin with but it just seemed like they were being underused in this for some reason. Or a better way to put that would be misused in this. Brian Tyree Henry's detective character felt as though they had either written him or the director directed him to act more like Winston Duke's character in Us and a lot of it fell flat. I don't blame Brian for this because he's shown that he has good comedic timing on Atlanta so I don't think it's the fault of the actor at all. It's either director's fault or bad writing. I really like Aubrey Plaza and I wish Hollywood would find something to do with her because I like her. She's really good on Legion. I saw her in Ingrid Goes West. That wasn't bad. And what was the other one called? It was like two really nondescript names like Dave and Mike Need Wedding Dates or something like that. I probably got the name wrong, but she was funny in that. So again, not her fault. I like that it had a few homages to some horror classics, but was also different enough from the original to be its own thing. There really is no reason to even call this Child's Play except for the cachet that the name Child's Play brings in the whole maintaining the rights thing. I mean, they could have just called it something like My Buddy. Well, wait. Speaking of the name Buddy, in my Child's Play 1988 review, I did mention that the working title of the movie was Blood Buddy, so it's kind of interesting to see them bring back the Buddy name. On to the effects and gore. The doll effects were really not impressive, especially when compared to the 1988 original version. This is now 31 years later, and I really expected it to be a lot better when it comes to the animatronics or even if they were going to use a little well they did I think that they used some CGI with the face I can't confirm that but just to my eyes it looked like they CGI the face and I wasn't impressed I guess we'll just have to wait for the Dark Crystal on Netflix to come out for us to see some puppeteering and animatronics again <laughs> The gore, on the other hand, was quite enjoyable and well executed. My only question was why did they choose to show everything on some scenes and then do cutaways for other scenes? It kind of felt like the movie couldn't decide whether it was going to be rated R or PG-13. It definitely was a fun time. I laughed out loud on some scenes, which I will get into in the spoiler review. I really liked how the makers of this movie had a balance between not taking themselves too seriously and slipping in some social commentary in there about um, Black Friday, iPhone, and um, factory conditions. I enjoyed this more than I expected to and I think that teenagers really enjoyed it. If you are Generation Z um, and you're a teenager or preteen, let me know what did you think of this Child's Play 2019. Also, if you saw the 1988 version, what did you think of that? Which one connected with you more? I'm just really interested to find out. That's not to say that I don't want to hear what us old heads have to say. You know I always ask you guys the same thing at the end of all the videos. Because, like I always say, just because I love something doesn't mean you won't hate it. And just because I hate something doesn't mean you won't love it. Did you see the 2019 Child's Play? How did you feel about it? Did you catch the social commentary in there? I'm going to talk more about that in the spoiler uh, filled review, which I'm just about to record. So let me finish this one up and I will talk to you later. Bye.